I'd show you guys a couple things going on with this craftsman and that craftsman. Uh, but I guess we'll start with Chuck here. Um, I meant to make a video on this before, but I had a cold. Feeling much better now. So, start off with, we got a CB antenna. And the CB, which we cut out. It's nice. It's in there good. I can actually see it turn on here. It's got this little... mic on there so that's pretty cool so yeah we got CB on there why because we can communicate with this lawnmower with the trucks that have the CB radios when you go to off-road with these things because we're hoping to it's a thought we it's, it hasn't been passed yet but we might take this to Vermont maybe never I'm not saying nothing it's only out loud um, we redid the wiring to this, these lights, so they go down and then they go up and, and then right into here. So it's a little neater. So basically, we just did a little bit of wiring on this thing. Um, it would run right, right now, but uh, no fuel. And we took the grill out, and I'm hoping to buy a gear, a new grill, Alpha Sears, um, from my Craftsman uh, LT1500. Uh, Craftsman's, they usually have the same hoods except for the square body years. Um, but from the 90s up to the 2007, 2006 range, um, the hoods were different, like different configurations, but the grills were the exact same fault pattern. Uh, so we got a new grill coming for that. Okay, now this old grill, um, we uh, got this tire. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think. Um, no, no, that, that's this tire. I'm tired today. I've been working on this thing all day. Here it is. So, there's the old tire. Here's the new tire. Uh, it's not brand new, but it's uh, good enough. Holds air. Uh, I was going to replace it on a video, but then Chuck... Um, Things started happening with Chuck, and then we had the winter snowstorm, and that kind of ruined it. And this tractor was kind of out over there. So now that we got it in, we did the tire, re grease the axle, did this tire, re grease the axle, took that tire out, so that's junk. Um, and right now, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, replace um, the clip, the little um, K pin inside the brake clutch because that broke off. Um, it happens sometimes, just the way it is. Um, we're gonna quickly replace that, test the brakes, um, test the gear shifting, make sure that's good. And then we're gonna start it up and take it for a little drive. Nothing, no off-roading, just a little, little something, something, just kinda get the steering of it all. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into it. Um, I do have these little pins in here. Not too long. That might do it. Pins. These new tools are a lot of help, especially with the old US Jenny. US General. Alright, so let's get under here. This is a great video for you craftsmen guys out there that need the help. Alright, so this is your brake clutch, which connects to your actual clutch on the other side, because your clutch controls your shifting, your belt tension, and of course, your brake rod, clutch rod. You can adjust this by moving the bolt backwards and moving the spring backwards. If the bolt is more back, um, backwards, you're gonna have less brake tension, which means not a lot of brakes. And if the bolt is all the way up, you're gonna have too much brake. It's gonna be, it's gonna be too sensitive. So I recommend right here in the middle of the clutch, uh, a couple dozen threads in, and then just tighten it up, and that's the perfect clutch setting. Uh, but this is a six-speed, so it's going to be a little tough to get this pin in. But also what I noticed is, see that? See how loose that is? No bueno. I don't like that. Those got to be nice and tight on there. Not super tight. My birds are going crazy over there. Um... But they gotta be this little clutch right here. As you can see, how it's wobbling. 
you're just going to keep breaking pins, um, pressing and depressing that clutch. So what you got to do is just tighten it up a little bit with the center bolt right there. Um, I'm just going to do it with a little monkey wrench. Just kind of tighten that up. Right, guys, we're back with the bolt here. I had to stop the video because I accidentally stopped it with my thumb when I was trying to get under this thing. So, as you can see, here is our center bolt right here. You don't want to tighten it too much, but what that's going to do is press in this little clutch here that's really, really loose. And it's going to give you a good amount of brake tension, so you don't want to do it too much. Try to angle it at a good spot here for you. You just want to do it at a good amount of tightness. Because I can, you can see it's really loose. Look how loose that is. That is loose. So this stuff happens from vibration, uh, especially on these manuals, because you got a lot of ground clearance up here. Um, you know, a lot of bushes, probably bumps you hit with these things, even on just regular mowing, they can uh, cause vibration to uh, back the bolts out. So there's not, I mean, you could put brake Loctite on them, but what's the point of putting Loctite on the bolt if you can just spend less money, just tighten it yourself? I mean, I guess the only problem with Loctite is when it's on there, it's on there. You ain't coming. You're gonna have to torch it off. So you really don't want to put Loctite on these brake bolts. I mean, I don't recommend it. That bolt can just get in there. Good lord. There we go. Alrighty. So um, I right, so we're gonna turn that like that. I assume. Yep. Apologize if my hand gets in the way of the camera here. I'm in a weird angle for recording. But I really want you guys to see this. I felt it click. So we're moving it a little bit. Oof. Alright, so, um, that's not too good. There's a little spring on the top here. You can't really see it from here, but underneath this bolt right here, there's a spring on top of it, and if it's not connected to the clutch, it ain't going nowhere. <coughs> and you're not really going to have good brake pressure either. That's not too good, because these are really hard to put on. I don't want to, but we might have to jack this up, take that tire off and do it like that. I think we'll have to do that. Yep. I'll get back to you guys when I uh, jack this thing up and uh, show you what I mean. All right, we're back. These things can be really hard to take off, so I just recommend grabbing some pliers and just pinching the top nipple right here. Pinching it a little, you can see how it kind of gets a little loose, so that's good. All right, so we're gonna grab ourselves some needle nose pliers because we're gonna do this job right. Um, we have air there. Okay. And you're just gonna lightly, very lightly, drop that gear up. I mean the pin, geez, not the gear. Look at that. Careful, these can break, and you can see that that's not greased up, so that could break on you. Yeah, boy, what are you doing, huh? Dog. Alrighty. Got this little washer, don't lose it. Might grease this up anyways. While we're here, I got some grease. While my dog is chewing up a stick. Right, nice and easy. Wiggle it, don't force it, because there are um, keys, keyways, uh, little key things in these axles, so you gotta be careful with that. So it's just kind of nice and easy. 
camera out a little bit, get it loose. So actually, let me take this tire off because uh, it is going to require two hands. So I'll be back from you guys when I do that. We're back, and as you can see, not greased. Look at all that rust. Not good. What happens is when your tire's moving in here, it creates friction. And if rust gets in there, it's going to make this baby hot, and you don't want that. You can actually see here, a little bit of lube here, not much. Grease your axle shafts, people. I just did the Kubota, and you'll see it in an episode on the Kubota restoration series, because we just dragged it up from the trail. We had an axle just like this, and we had to torch it off. Um, not this specific axle, it was one of the front um, tire axles. We had to torch it off, it was that bad, because all the grease was just there was no grease in there it was just all rust so i recommend this stuff this is lithium grease take a look at that you can get this stuff at your local hardware store for like 15 bucks 10 bucks not too much money so what we're gonna do is a little bit just a little bit right there spread it around spread that good stuff around Get on the front here too. Get underneath. Might want a little more just for that bottom part. Have a rag with you, like me. A little shop rag, so you don't have to wipe the stuff on your own self. Take this stuff off. Grab a little more grease. Some little housing. So being that this side's not greased, it's going to be safe to assume the other side's not greased. So we'll grease that side up. You should never take off a tire and only grease one side. Always grease both sides. Be safe because pretty soon you're going to be spending more money on a new rim. Because that rust, after a while, it chews the inside. It chews it all up in there. And then when the key, the little key here... Don't forget to grease this up too. When this doesn't have enough lube, it's gonna get hot. You can actually see you got a little hot in there. Just a little bit. It's that dark color. That dark silvery color, kind of like a burnt color. So we're just gonna grease that up nice and good. Alright. So right there. Uh, that pin will get greased on its own. All right, let me just grab my rag over here. Okay, so here's what I want to show you guys. This little um, spring makes it so that when you push your clutch in, there's tension. It's not loosey-goosey. There's tension on the spring. Um, and if this isn't connected to this little bridge right here, if this spring isn't connected to that bridge right there, you're going to get that. I thought it was the ball for a minute but it's the spring. This can happen if you clutch dump it too much. Um, Chuck, I deleted it on Chuck because um, she's posy, so she doesn't have it, which means no brakes, but I know how to drive it, so I know my rig pretty well. So, grab us a needle nose, pull it all the way back. Gotta take some arm strength. These things are tough. Come on, you don't want to go in there. Okay, and then be careful with these because they will explode. It's not really fun. There we go. Man, there's no so tension on that thing. And voila, it's not as loose. Let's see, look at this. See how it comes back? Watch this. Boom, 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 boom. Good. You see the spring expand, contrast right there. That's what you want. This disc looks pretty, pretty good. Uh, I would recommend taking an air compressor and blowing that stuff out, but we don't need to. Okay, so let's grab our little pin here. For those of you who don't know, almost fell. This is a uh, 89, maybe 88 Craftsman 2. Uh, first gen 2000, I guess you could say, but it's just literally Craftsman 2. 
No other name. Comes with a Kohler. Single cylinder Kohler, which you'll see in a minute. So we're gonna take this little pin. If it falls out, it's fine. But we're gonna... Interesting doing this with one hand, I'll tell you that. Pull that up. Bend it. Come on now. There we go. Voila. Turn that up. Look at that. Not a professional, but I think we did a good job. We're gonna bend this too, just in case like that you don't want this to like pop up when you're because you can be romping on this baby hard you hit a rock the clutch goes up the pin comes right off now you're stuck so always best to bend both sides even though this has a little crease on it so it prevents it from going up i still do it just in case that's just the way i do things so i'm gonna put the camera uh right right here and right there and I'm gonna push the clutch in and see what we get for clutch tension and see if that clutch comes in and out without breaking the pin. This is gonna be interesting because the whole reason why we did this episode here is because it broke the, the clutch pin. So let's see what happens. Um, find a good camera angle. I completely forgot my camera stand, so we will use, ladies and gentlemen, old Briggs and Stratton. That's a little too much. I apologize, people. I'm not rich. But I can at least find something that does work. Okay. Hopefully you guys can see that from around the side here. Let's see if we get oh, that feels nice. That feels nice the way it comes back like that, that's good. Okay, so I call that a success. It works. So now let's see if it'll stop. That is the goal. Jesus, this thing. I'm telling you, no fluids in it. And that thing's gotta be like 150 pounds. and change all right so we got the clutch dialed in i'm gonna put this tire back on because it does require two hands and while i'm doing that uh, we'll take the second tire off and uh, try and grease that up back good thing we checked the side here because i had to beat this tire off and it looks like the whoever had this did not grease it like i thought so it's all the same story as this tire, just a little worse because there seems to be a lot more rust. It looks like something's chewed the metal right here. I don't know. Hoping that's just me. But we're gonna put some grease on this baby. Just like that. Grease your actual shafts, people. Whether it's on a go-kart, an actual car. Oh, I, I think cars, the CV axles are a little easier to grease with a grease gun, but they're not like this, but go-karts, UTVs, ATVs, uh, golf carts, mini bikes, dirt bikes, grease them up. Because if that gets rusty like that, not only is it gonna be a, a absolute, you know what, to take the tire off in case you need to, but it's just going to be really hard for that tire to keep moving, especially with those dirt bikes. I've seen it happen where that dirt bike is just, the axle got so hot because it was rusty and never lubed up that the front tire just seized. And uh, one of my friends had that problem. And we ended up having to uh, 
get him a new tire. Had a good day. Oh. Oh, got some intruders. Oh dear. <laughs> OSHA inspectors, making sure I'm doing everything. OSHA approved. Before we go out for our rip, we are going to air up both of these tires, which I will do off camera, and then we'll start this little jewel up and uh, give her a little rip. I know, I know, I know. I'll get you your water. So I'll be back to you guys when we do that. All right, got the tires on, flayed it up. You guys got to see this. I've never seen a tractor in my life start up like this. Look at this. Throttle up, no choke, fuel's on. Watch this.
Wow, such, an, such a success. That's awesome. Well, that's it for today's video, guys. Remember, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions about regreasing any of your tires, axle shafts, or even that clutch um, on the steering, reach out to me, comment below. Let me know what your thoughts are. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Check out the Instagram. I'll put the link in the description. Heck of a win. Very happy.